My name is Dr. Michael Martinelli from St. Peter's Hospital in Albany, New York. Today we're going to be discussing the application and removal of the TR band. Um, the TR band is used to apply low pressure hemostasis at the site of the radial artery access and sheath. We'll discuss the importance of the Barbo and the reverse Barbo test as it pertains to placement of the TR band. And the reason why we maintain low pressure or patent hemostasis is to attempt to reduce the incidence of radial artery occlusion following radial artery catheterization and angioplasty. Although radial artery occlusion is thought to be rare and mostly asymptomatic, it is important when we are dealing with reaccess of the radial artery at a future time. Low pressure hemostasis or patent hemostasis enables blood to flow through the radial artery while compression is applied in order to reduce the likelihood of radial artery occlusion. To assist with managing hemostasis, Terumo has developed a dual balloon radial artery compression device designed to help manage the cessation of bleeding from the access site under low volumes of pressure. In addition, the TR band allows the user to control the pressure applied by incrementally titrating air throughout the recovery period. The TR band is unique in that it can manage two important elements concurrently and consistently, hemostasis and maintenance of low pressure. After removing the dressing, we will withdraw the introducer sheath about two to three centimeters in order to properly place the band on the patient's wrist so that there is no obstruction when seating the band. The TR band must be positioned differently when used on the left or right wrist. When attaching the device, ensure that the Terumo logo on the support plate is closest to the patient's little finger or ulnar side of the wrist. It is also important to align the green marker about one to two millimeters proximal to the puncture site and fix the strap on the wrist with the adjustable fastener. The green dot is located on the center of the compression balloon. Placement of the green dot is important because it ensures that the balloons are appropriately located on the radial artery to control bleeding. Now that the band location is properly secured, I will fill the inflation syringe with 15 to 18 mLs of air and slowly inject the 15 of 18 mLs of air into the air port of the TR band and simultaneously remove the radial sheath. The air will be fully inserted when the sheath is completely removed. The goal is for bleeding to cease when the sheath is completely removed from the patient's artery. Once we have fully inflated the TR band and confirmed that bleeding has stopped, we will now ensure patent hemostasis. We will do this by removing one cc per second while keeping an eye on the access site to watch for bleeding. Once we see a flash of blood, we will inject one to two cc's of air back into the balloon incrementally until bleeding stops. This will help to ensure patent hemostasis. This again can be confirmed with a reverse Barbo test. The patient is now ready to go to recovery. When it is time for the TR band to be removed, we will begin by removing the air in the balloon to check for hemostasis. I will start by removing three to five mLs. Since I have not seen any bleeding, I will continue to remove air from the balloon. If bleeding is still seen, we will insert enough air to restore hemostasis and once again confirm patent hemostasis. After 15 to 30 minutes, the removal process can be repeated. Now the air has been completely removed from the band and bleeding has stopped, we can unfasten the Velcro band, slowly remove the TR band by lifting toward the palm of the hand, and lastly, applying a sterile dressing. 